Tell us about yourself, Paul Woods. You live in central Portugal. You've sent me the most amazing uh, photographs of work that uh, you've done as an artist. Mm -hmm. Give us the background. Uh, tell us about you as an artist and how did you get to be here in Portugal? Uh, well, um, first and foremost, I, I am a professional artist. It's my career. I've uh, been doing that all my life. I arrived in Portugal out of necessity, really. Uh, Brexit came along and my wife, Asha, didn't have a birth certificate. And um, without the birth certificate, we were told we may not be allowed to stay in, in France. Sorry, because we were living in France. Uh, so we had to find a, another place to, to move to. And we looked around Europe. We wanted to stay in Europe. And we came across Portugal and really liked Portugal. So we, we made our move to here. Fantastic. Uh, and which, which part? I, I, I think you're a, we got to know each other via our good mate, Bairandi. Mm. And so presumably you're in that part of, of the country as well, in the wonderful Bairada district. I'm right opposite the winery. Uh, what, of, of, of Luis Pateau or the one that they exploded? Yeah. No, the Luis Pateau winery is right opposite me. We, we missed the, the wine lake by... Minutes, I, I, my friend Carl and I were out riding, and we went past where that happened, and we yeah. we passed it very shortly after it ha actually happened. So I didn't get to see it live, sadly, uh, but that was a pretty <laughs> dramatic event. Yes, I'm sure it must have been incredible. Yeah. I mean, with your visual eye to see a, a red street that should have been a sort of normal tarmac -y color, and presumably the smell of red wine just in the air. It, it was pretty potent the following day. You could still yeah. smell it. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. could have done with uh, some of that wine to uh, keep me going through my late evening yeah. art sessions. So <laughs> well, yes, well let's let's talk about that then. You and your art and and you know how the muse strikes mm. you, whether it's um, whether it's red wine or or, or something else. Uh, you sent me the most extraordinary pictures um, of your pictures, as it were. Um, so perhaps we could uh, have a look at those after I found out from you what it is about Portugal that's especially good for artists. Now I'm thinking, you know, a lot of people compare it to California um, <laughs> and the light. You know, there's a particular kind of light here in Portugal. We have our 300 days of sunshine, allegedly. It's not so obvious this time of year or at the moment. Um, but is that mm. is that part of it? I mean, I can see light bursting through to your right hand side here. Is is that a lot to do with why you why you enjoy being an artist in this and being in this country so much? I, I like being somewhere where I'm comfortable and warm. Uh, the weather for the moment isn't great. We've had a lot of uh, heavy rain. Mm. Light for me is not particularly important. I do most of my work at night time, oh. uh, so I, I don't need uh, light coming in from the right directions and things like that. It, it's oh. irrelevant. It's irrelevant to the way I work and the type of work that I that I do. Well, let's have a look at that type of work now, uh, and 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 if you could talk us through these, um, yeah, I, I mean, not exactly seeing Portuguese landscapes here, are we? But then maybe maybe we are, maybe we are in some other uh, other way here. So, what's going on here, Paul? Well, my work is is basically it's not about a narrative. It, it's not something that's telling a a story, and you're supposed to understand and read the story. It's more to do. Uh, with composition, uh, significant form, uh, the way lines, areas work together. Uh, it, it's, it's based around, obviously, the, the figure. I'm, I'm not a great fan of going into pure abstraction mm -hmm. uh, or non-figurative work. So I love working with the figure uh, so that it's always people in in my my pictures uh this one is a a religious painting uh this is a someone receiving uh stigmatas so the hands are up there with the 
the light going through the holes in, in the hands for the stigmata. Uh, the person's on the sitting on the ground with a, a, a little cross you can see there uh, and some flowers. So it's, it's about form. It's about how uh, a, a picture is composed and, and balanced, which is one of the most important fundamental elements of, of creating art. Uh, and artists do need to understand composition and balance with it within a painting, within an artwork. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's have a look at some more of your work. Uh, the, again, uh, clearly um, the, the human form here, a female one, if I'm not mistaken, and, and a little bit of landscape as well. What's going on here, Paul? Uh, well, as I say, I'm not telling stories, so what you see is is what you're getting there. It's a, a reclining oh, okay. a reclining figure on the grass with a, a, a landscape uh, in the background. Yes. So, so it's, it's, it's to do with the rhythm of, of, of the line uh, and, and the shapes that you're trying to take in. So with a with face down in the right-hand corner, uh, you've got that lovely flowing line that forms the face, the neck, goes into the, into the breasts. Mm. Uh, and then this top and bottom balance with with the painting uh lines across the top and and a line across the bottom so uh, it's, it's, it's almost we we have a, a god squad tip of the day which is a physical fitness um intervention mm -hmm. from our very own coach here that to me looks like a core strength exercise as well strangely enough and coincidentally um but yes as you say beautifully balanced composition uh, in in there um and the male form on this one i see here this, this is me. <laughs> That's not portrait. This 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 is me in in one of my artistic angst moments. I see. Uh, okay. All right, you've got rid of your clothes in your artistic angst moment. There, it would appear, or is that sort of the nakedness of vulnerability? It's. I like working with 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 the nude figure because it's it's timeless. If if you have a a clothed figure, it automatically kind of gives it a, a time and other meanings and other relevances to, to the artwork. So traditionally, artists have, have worked for many years uh, as a, the core of, of the nude, uh, and I like to continue that tradition. It gets, it's a bit difficult in, in today's uh, environment with with nudity and things but i like to continue the the trend with uh, keeping the figure you make an nude. interesting point you make an interesting point as in what the sexualization of the nude so that people can't i mean in a way that you can't look yeah. at a clothed figure in a, I, I, that never occurred to me before and mm. you're absolutely right you can't look at a clothed figure without the clothes meaning something historically mm. right? it suddenly becomes contextual doesn't it and you say oh that person's from that period yeah. whereas the nude is timeless as you say however the nude within sort of you know uh, politics now mm -hmm. um and, and in sociological and, and political terms we are we are in sort of highly charged times aren't we and the, and the, yeah. the form has become over sexualized you might say such that we can't see it without um, there being some sort of sexual reference now. Mm -hmm. Well, a part of this the style of of work that that I have is that I I like to counter the the kind of sexual side of a figure uh, with the the way I work. Uh, I think if anyone could seriously look at my, my, my drawings there and, and find them sexually exciting, I, I would be very <laughs> wary of them, to be honest. It, it's, I, it's, a, it's a deliberate ploy to, to desexualize it, to make it less um, perverse or, or demeaning uh, yes, it's a naked figure, but it's not being sexualized. It, 
Very, yeah. very fascinating. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And in our times, it's hard to uh, imagine people not being able to do that now in, mm -hmm. in the way it's been conditioned over recent decades. That is absolutely fascinating. So, yeah, if uh, if the viewer is is excited by your figures in that way, perhaps they uh, it says more about them than it does about you. Yeah. So if we if we continue um, uh, another, another beautifully balanced composed uh, picture here. So you say you 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 do these mainly at night. Obviously, you're not. You, I, I was I went off on the wrong sort of tangent talking about the light quality here in Portugal. That's not the style of your work, is it? This is very much um, yeah. from your mind and can be um, executed if you like um, in your studio at any time of the day. It's not to do with natural. Any time. No, I don't need any of that. Any any time, and I'm usually at my liveliest in in the evening. So I do most of them at night. Yeah. Uh, the ones that you're sh showing are some very recent ones on black paper. Yeah. So by the very nature of having the black paper, everything looks like it's a a, a night scene. Yes. Uh, but as you can see in in a couple of the images here. I've got the the sun in this one. I've got the sun up in the top, top right. Um, in the other one, I had both the sun and the moon. I put both into a picture sometimes. Sun, sun and moon. So I've got the sun there and the moon there. Yes. And you can see the lovely arc created by the flower, the sun, the moon, and the feet at the top. Yes. Gives it a a, a balanced arc across the uh, across the top uh, and the rays of light sort of spreads out the visual image yes and, and a still um, life here i do like a, a still life uh, people t seem to like my my still lives a bit of a bit of fruit once again a, a nice bright su sunny day in the, in the background yes uh, and color is is very important and i find color uh, sings on on a on a black background, uh, yeah, so yeah, color yeah. color looks fantastic on 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 black. It does, it does, and and again, you explaining that that hadn't occurred to me, uh, the dynamic that that brings using a black canvas, uh, which is a bit sort of uh, uh, going against the norm of things, isn't it? Uh, and you sent me this picture as well this morning um, to describe how you you know you have to, you you operate in different styles um that looks very classical does that some of your work as well is it yes um i wanted to show that because uh, obviously the my my work that that i'm passionate about is is uh quite difficult for some people to to take they don't they don't understand it they don't lock into elements and principles mm -hmm. so they 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 miss the point of, of the work um I wanted to show people that I can do classical type work. This this was a a drawing of a Raphael, all done all done by hand. Uh, no mechanical devices and optical things going on to create this. I wanted to show people that I have that kind of uh, classical training and skills yes uh, so I, I did a series of of drawings like this uh, which i gave away to friends beautiful absolutely so, beautiful. no ai involved in that so have you been an artist all your life paul i've been an artist uh, yes all my life it, it's been my my passion uh i just love being an artist and i love what I enjoy is passing on that that passion to other people. Mm -hmm. So I, when I first came to Portugal, I wanted to set up a, an art retreat uh, and run art classes and events all to do with with art and everything. Uh, unfortunately, my wife died recently, so that all came crashing down. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, yes, it was, and still is a very traumatic sure. moment. Um, so I, I set up something I call myself talking art. 
so I, I like talking about art. I like passing on uh, information and understanding to other people. I like teaching uh, to other people. So I'm, I'm getting my studio ready so I can run art classes here either one day at a time or a weekend or even a, a long a long week of, of doing specialized artwork yes so teaching people how art is constructed and creates the, the sense of balance and how a painting actually works uh, because a painting can be successful it can be non-successful uh, it isn't in the eye of the beholder as everyone likes to think it's objective uh, and subjective as well so you can understand and learn how to create great works uh, but unfortunately it's something that most artists don't do they're just interested in in putting down their their colors and feel that, that that's enough composition and, and structure yep. is important absolutely so, absolutely and I, I love the cut of your jib here i think this is so important because in the same way that the nude has been sort of superficialized mm -hmm. and sexualized i think it's the same with our understanding of art isn't it and certainly you know the the kind of art you're talking about with with composition and color yeah. And and the, and the, within the media you use, mm. something is not being understood. We've gone, we, we go straight to I like it or I don't like it, or looking for a story as I did. You know, I made a lot of yeah. assumptions about you, yeah. your work, and art in general. And you've taught me something or reminded me of something here this morning. Mm. And that's what you'd like to impart, is it, with 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 the art workshops you do and, and, it and is. your mission as an artist. Uh, those sorts of things, as, as you rightly say, people are always say, oh, I love art, I love art, I, I like going to galleries I, uh, and art. Uh, but, you've, but you find out that basically the only thing they can say about art is usually, oh, I like that, it's yeah. got a cow in it, I like cows, yeah. isn't that a pretty blue? And their vocabulary is... Is completely gone. They don't know how to talk about a painting because they don't know how a painting is constructed. Uh, so you don't get, it's difficult to talk to another person about art if they don't have the understanding and the language to be able to talk, talk back with you. So teaching people how to read a painting, how to look at a painting, uh, and, and what's important in a painting. Do you know what, Paul? It's, it's not their fault either, is it? That's that's the point here. It's how. No, no, no. It's, it's not their fault at all. It, it's the way art has been taught for so long now. Is it's this nice, nice approach of whatever you do, you've got to love it. Whatever you put there, oh, that's lovely. That's great. That's fantastic. Oh, you're so talented. You're so good. And if you're brought up constantly being told you're so good, you're so talented, when you're clearly not, <laughs> uh, you're 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 going to have this this problem where everyone thinks they're an artist, everyone thinks that they're a good artist because everyone keeps saying, "Oh, you're so good, you're so clever," yeah. uh, uh, and it's people who don't know anything about art telling other people who don't know how about art about how good it is paul so, i need to stop you there and i want you to come back because i'd like to talk about this more uh, we've got some dad jokes to share by way of a palate cleanser and sorry okay a crunchy end here so to speak no one likes a crunchy end first thing in the morning <laughs> uh, in his epigraph into bluebeard kurt vonnegut quotes his son mark and gives an answer to what he believes is the meaning of life we are here to help each other get through this thing whatever it is and clearly paul is doing that through art you've taken us to a new level of understanding there paul so thank you do come back and join us if you like i'd some, love uh, to let's see how you respond to the dad jokes here because that's all part of being on the good morning <laughs> show. the adjective for metal is metallic but not for iron which is ironic there you go and uh, please 
help me stamp out, eliminate and abolish redundancy. Very funny. And I'm the type of father, this is me actually, who helps his kids look for their missing chocolate that I ate. If you're that kind of father, you should be ashamed of yourself. Um, but we forgive you and we'll see you again tomorrow morning. Paul, thank you so yeah. much. Thanks to Bye Randy for his help behind the scenes. Take care, mate. Um, bye. Okay. Cheers, thank mate. you very much. Cheers. And thanks to Monty Gorda and Paul Correa.